Awesome. Thank you. I don't know what that was. We are continuing the message series, What's Love Got to Do With It? And we've talked for a couple of weeks about love. And uh, last week, last week we looked a little bit at the purpose of love. And if you weren't here last week, um, at some point we'll have that. Uh, we have some extra that was kind of recorded on that, but we'll, we'll have that in a little bit. But uh, last week we looked at the idea of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And we looked not kind of at the money part of it. We're going to look at that today. But the peripheral parts of that, the sides of that, the bookends of, of what we're going to look in today. And we, and we begin to understand that love is not necessarily the greatest action. It is an action. Love is an action verb. It is something you do. You don't just say it, but you do it. Every time in the Bible, when the Bible talks about love, it always uh, is partnered with some action. It's partnered with something uh, that is going on. But love is not necessarily the greatest action, but love is in itself the greatest atmosphere and the greatest reality that we do all of our actions. That, that love is the thing that makes everything that we do work. The Bible talks about, again, not to re-preach it, but in 1 Corinthians around where we're talking about today, it says that we can do all the ministry. We can, we can have all the gifts. We can do everything that there is to do and to know. But yet if we don't have love, it's just noise. It's, it's sounding cymbals and clanging gongs. And the words that, that the scripture uses there and the, the image of there being, being, you know, full of sound and fury, but signifying nothing to take a, a, a poet's words about it. But to be able to, to not have love, that we can do all kinds of things. And, and we talked about how our lives, if we're not not seeing effectiveness in what we do when we may be doing all the right things we may need to look at the atmosphere of love and does it exist or not and and we begin to end with the idea of the, that the more we the more we see Jesus because it talks about looking into a reflection in those scriptures the more we see Jesus the more we'll be able to love and the more that we demonstrate love the more we'll look like Jesus and so we begin to talk about that, the importance of love and the purpose of love is, is, is to make effective our work, our ministry, but to make effective our lives, to make effective our marriages and, and our jobs and all that, to be in f- effective in life, we must love. You, you cannot just go do everything that you do and not have love and still be effective. You say, well, I've, I've achieved rank in, in my job or in, in, in people's eyes. I've gained money and all that kind of stuff. And I'm telling you, all that stuff, and you know this, it'll pass away. It'll fade away. But if you want to be truly effective in your life, if you want to be truly effective, the only way is for you to have love. So with that in mind, I want to follow up with what's love got to do with it. But today I want to answer a question, and, and really part one, because we'll look at the rest of it next week. But uh, the, the, the Lord continues to direct in that way. But we're going to look at the idea of what is love. What is love? I want to love. You want to be loving. You're convinced that you have to be loving. Maybe you don't want to be, but you know you should want to be. And so you decide, all right, I'm going to work toward that and do that. And, and, and what you need to know is the reality is stop trying to do it and just do it. The more it's like it's like it's like when you want to go to bed at night and you're trying to go to bed at night, you'll stay awake for a long time. And you're laying there and I need to go to bed. I'm trying to go to bed and you're counting sheep and doing all that kind of stuff and it doesn't work. Stop trying it and just do it. Just be loving, okay? But what does that look like? Because we have different views of that. And, and sometimes people get messed up because love looks a lot like other things. Uh, love and lust get confused a lot of times in our life. Uh, abuse sometimes is thought to be love, but it's not love. It's really something else. And so what is love? And we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If you have you version on your phones, if you look at that, I put really just kind of the answer to some of it in there, and, and I'll allow you to fill in some of those notes. I don't know how much of the notes you take on that, but if you want to keep them, remember to save that at some point. Uh, before we leave, I think you have until 12:30 uh, to get everything saved on that. So I want you to to do that. So we're going to look at First Corinthians chapter 13, just uh, three verses today, 
Again, it's the money shot here. This is this is this is where where it all goes. This is what you're going to hear at the weddings. Uh, this is going to be in the cards from the Christian bookstore. I mean, this is the money shot here is is what love is. All right. The Bible says in First Corinthians uh, chapter thirteen, verse four, it says that love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. Or proud, and then verse five it says, or rude. So love is not rude. Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wrong. And then verse six tells us that love does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. What is love? Um, if we want to put back up verse 3, because we'll just be running through those just for a moment or, or here in just a moment. Love is, love is really, it, it comes down to this, and we're going to see this in the first couple of descriptions that it gives us here in just a moment. Love is really about giving up control. That's what love is. You, you, you have a choice. And it's not, about, it's, it's not about necessarily what you are trying to control, but it's about what is controlling you. You have a choice in life what you are going to be controlled by. You see, sometimes we have a hard time loving because of past hurts. Sometimes we have a hard time loving because of the way we were treated in the past. And we'll look at that in just a moment. Sometimes we have a hard time loving because um, we've been been hit with a stick one too many times. That we've had people turn their back on us one too many times. That we've been stabbed in the back one too many times. Uh, perhaps a marriage has failed one too many times, that a child has done something against us one too many times, that, that at work we've gotten the raw end of the deal one too many times, and we have trouble loving. Perhaps in this room you have trouble loving because you've never had love demonstrated to you, that the, any love that was demonstrated to you was really abuse, was really pain, was really some sort of uh, distorted view of love. And, and, and when we don't look through the eyes of love, things are distorted. And when maybe you've had parents in the room and we try to tell you about a loving heavenly father, but the only father that you've ever known was an abusive father, that maybe we talk about God being a, a good, good parent, as it were, and maybe your parents were not that. Maybe we talk about God being a friend and every friend you've ever had or thought you've had has stabbed you in their back and turned their back on you and and our view of love is distorted and here's the deal what happens is our past our hurts our pain our own will is in control more than love is in control so we have a choice of who are we going to put in control am i going to allow my past to control me am i going to allow my relationship that i had with you yesterday control me or am i going to allow love to control me today Am I going to allow the things that did not happen or did happen over the past few days or weeks or months or year, am I going to allow that to control my life? Or am I going to step in with a fresh slate today and am I going to love you? It's a matter of control. Who are you going to let control you? What are you going to let control you? Let me tell you that I know how life is. I know how people are. And if we're trying in our own strength to just love them, if we are trying to love them, we're going to fail because it means that something else is still charging us. Something else is still guiding us. Something else is still directing us. That we go into the room and we're supposed to love them, so we smile. And we say, <laughs> and we pat them on the back, and we do everything that we do, and we walk away and say, duh, 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 duh. and we just mumble to ourselves because we've attempted to control, we attempted to love them, and we've allowed what they did to us yesterday, what happened to us a year ago, to really be in control. Instead of just walking in and, and saying, God, I'm not even going to try it, I'm just going to do it. I would challenge you over the next few days quit trying to love. Just love. Quit quit working it up. Don't beat yourself up when you blow it, but quit working it up and just do it. Look for ways and just, I'm, I'm just going to love. I'm just going to love. I'm going to assume that you're the best person in the world whenever I see you. 
I'm going to walk in and you've stabbed everybody else in the back, but I'm going to forget about it. And I'm just going to believe that we're just going to, we're, we're going to, we're going to have the best relationship and it's going to be great. And whatever you're doing is awesome. And however you're living is great. And it's just fantastic. And I'm just going to love you. And I'm going to come up and I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get the spirit of Danielle on me and I'm going to hug you and I'm going to just jump on you and I'm going to kiss you on the cheek and it's going to be great. And I'm not going to get the flu because faith is going to keep me from that. And it's going to be awesome. And this whole time, and I'm just going to love. Wouldn't you love to be able to love like that? Yes. Some of you are like, I'm not so sure about all that. But that's okay. Just to love to be able to love like that. I would love to be able to love like that. So I'm just going to love. So what is, what is love? I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about love for a few moments here. We have a few moments. Let's do it. And then we'll go home. I'm going to put an ice pack on my back because I'm old. So there you go. All right, we're, we're claiming healing up here. I've, I've done lost my breath three times. Here we go. I'm going to drink a drink. Holly says I shouldn't do it. That's okay. Nope, it wouldn't. No, water would not be better. Mm-mm. Wouldn't taste better. Wouldn't be better. It's got doctor in the name. It's good. Whatever you, whatever you do. So what is love? Here we go. You got your notes? Got your Bibles? What is love? Okay. First of all, the Bible says this. It gives you the first definition in verse 4. Love is patient and love is kind. Patience and kindness. Really, really hard when people aren't being patient with you. And really, really hard when people aren't being kind with you. But love is patient and kind. Remember, you're not going to be controlled by what they do to you. You're not going to be controlled by how everybody else is coming up to you. You're not going to be controlled by that. You're going to love. So how do I do that? Well, love is being patient and kind. But the word patience here, we actually looked at it, I think, last week. But the word really is, and it's a better word than patience. It's long-suffering. <laughs> that's, that's a better word. That's, that's a much better word. Because there's times it's like, <laughs> I don't know how long I can stay here. I don't know how long I can do this. And you're suffering and you're suffering and suffering. Um, uh, to, to, be, to, be, to be patient doesn't mean that you're okay with how it is right now, but it means that you're not going to lose it while you're in whatever you're going through right then. That you're, that you're, you're not okay with it. This might not be a good thing, but you're going to suffer long for a while. That you're not going to give up when the first thing happens, when the first word is spoken, when, when, when somebody comes on and flies off the handle in just a moment, you're not going to immediately just reciprocate right back. You're not, you're not going to come back with something that's just as hard, but you're going to understand that hurting people hurt people. And you're going to allow the suffering to be something that you would stand for a while. To be patient, man, when everyone else is losing their mind because of the hurt, that you are going to be able to be long-suffering in the middle of it. The pain might be intense, but you're not going to lose it. The pain might be hard. The struggle might be real. But in the middle of all of it, you're going to be long-suffering. You're going to be able to stand. And everybody else falls, but you're going to be able to do it. The word long-suffering actually means this. If you do a study of the word, it means that you're not quick to punish. That you're, you're not quick to come right back. And to, and to lay down some sort of law. And, and, and listen, the idea of not quick to punish, it may be your boss that you got to love. It may be someone you can't punish. It may be someone who is your, your equal in a standing in a, in a situation uh, and you can't punish them. But it's the idea that you're not, you're not going to do something right back to them. That you're not going to... To be patient means you're not going to make someone pay for what they do. Have you ever walked away somewhere? They'll get theirs. They'll get theirs. Have you ever done that? You walked away maybe in the middle of it. They'll get theirs and I'm about to give it to them. Have you ever done that? That is the exact opposite of love, if I may help you there for a moment. I know. I know. That is the exact opposite of love. Love is patient. And love is not only patient, but love is kind, which means you don't just grin and bear it and don't mean it. It means you mean it. To be kind. You know, the word to be kind, because we all know what kind is, and kind, and sometimes we think kind is weak. They're very kind. You know, Women in the room, did you just want to marry somebody kind? Or do you want the warrior guy? Do you want the guy with him, you know, he's strong and whatever. You want both, I guess. But immediately you're going to be like, you know, that guy's kind. You know, he's got a good personality. That's, you know, you don't want that. Got to be something more. But kind, and I just want to be kind. I want to be patient and kind. 
What is that? You know what kind really means this. It, kind, the word that's translated kind here, and really when you think about kindness, the kind really means to be manageable or usable. Have you, have, have, you ever, have, have you ever tried to get along with someone who's not kind? It's, it's not a very usable relationship. That they're not manageable. And it doesn't mean that you manipulate them. There's a difference between being manipulated and being managed. There's a difference. That being kind means that you're, you're, willing to take, um, you're willing to take some correction and direction at times. It means that, that you're able to allow someone to... To fix you. Again, as women in the room, you know, you find someone close to perfect and then you, you fix them. You, you, you manage them. And, that, and that's what you do. Holly f- is in the process of fixing me. You know, she's, uh, she's in the process of, uh, I feel very, very bad for her sometimes, all she has to put up with. You know, and those, and, and every guy would be on. But, but you become manageable. You become manageable. You become someone that's usable. And when you begin to think about what love is, love is usable. Love is kind. It's manageable. It's able to kind of go with the flow a little bit. You're able to bend and not break. You're able to be able to go through that that process. So in order to be loving today, what is love? It means that that, that you are long-suffering and that you are manageable and usable. If you are hard, if it is hard for someone to get along with you, You're falling short of kindness as the Bible describes it. Well, they just need to adjust. No. Well, they just need to understand this is who I am. No. Well, they just need to know I'm just just, just this way. I'll always be this way and I'm not going to change for everybody. Well, stop and change. Love is patient, long-suffering, able to stand when everyone else is blowing off and everybody else is losing their mind. Love doesn't lose their mind. And love is someone that other people can work with and be with and be better after they were with. That's kindness. And then the Bible begins to describe. Paul begins to describe to the people of Corinth who felt like they were loving. He began to describe to them what love is not. So let's just go through here and let's look. Oh, the patient and kind. I had another scripture. Ah, it's just a great scripture. It's found in... Uh, Somewhere, Proverbs 15.1. Thank you so much. You've got it in, in there, but if you don't, I don't want the people with the old school Bibles to miss out on this one. It's a great one. A gentle answer deflects anger, turns away wrath, the other scriptures say, but harsh words make tempers flare. If you can have a gentle answer, if you can come back and, again, with everybody else is going crazy and, and, uh, and, and, and when everybody else is yelling, you, you don't reciprocate. You don't, you don't go in, in like manner, but, but you're kind and you're manageable. Um, and, and let me just tell you this about being patient and kind, and, and you can go back to those scriptures. If, before being patient and kind, you, you might be right in the battle, but you will never win if you continue to fight. You'll never win. You may be right, but you're not going to win. Nobody wins when people are not being patient and kind. Nobody wins when love is not demonstrated, when love is not given. No one wins. So what is not? What is, what, what, you know what I'm saying. Love is what? Here we go. Love is not jealous. This is when we get into the idea of control. We get into the idea of ownership. We get into the idea that, uh, that something belongs to me. When I am jealous, it implies ownership. When I am jealous, it means that it's mine and I don't want anybody else having it. And, and I worked for it or I got it and it's mine and nobody else can have it. We begin to get jealous sometimes. And, and sometimes we take possession and ownership of things that aren't, aren't ours. We just we want them so we get jealous of them. When we describe relationships, sometimes people, one in the relationship is seen as jealous. It's the person that doesn't want the other half to talk to people. And, 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 and not that they just, they want them to be around and that's good, but, but they go over and above to where you've, you've been around relationships and you've seen relationships where one is manipulative, not manageable, but manipulative to where they won't allow there to be a, a relationship with, with family. They won't allow for someone to to go that they're always questioning, that they're always they don't trust them, uh, that uh, you know, and, and it's those kind of things, and it's that they're always they feel like they got to check the phones, they feel like they got to look at the email, they feel like they got to do all that. And I'm not talking about not being accountable. Be accountable to your spouse, to your partner. Do that, 
I, I've watched, you know, on TV, and, it, and it's TV, but you'll see the shows, and the, 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 the husband or wife will be in, the, in one room, and the other will be in another room, and they'll say, oh, I've got to get something, and they run out the door. And I'm thinking, you, you're supposed to go tell your wife where you're going. You're supposed, you're supposed to let them know, you know, those kind of things. Uh, Holly, for the most part, always knows where I am, and I always know where, where she is. I mean, you know, there's reasons to that. I'm saying, hey, i got to go to Walmart, and then I'm doing this other thing. Sometimes I'll tell her that, but, you know, if I'm going somewhere, she knows. It's accountability, and that's a good thing. But accountability is different than trying to be manipulative and trying to be overbearing and in control of someone else. You know the old saying about relationships, if you love someone, set them free. And if they don't come back, you never really had them at all. And, and, and that's the idea of jealousy, that you begin to get in the place and love, love, lo, to love, to not be jealous, it doesn't mean that you don't care. Can I help you? Don't don't read the magazines that sell, say make your spouse jealous to see if they care. Don't do that. That's trouble. <laughs> it's trouble. Yeah. Don't do that. That's it's borderline insane. Don't do that. All right. Any of those little magazines that tell you to do that, don't don't do that kind of thing. All right. Don't. Well, I'm gonna make him jealous. Quit it. Stop it. I could go further with that, and it would be bad, and nobody would like what I would have to say. But that's okay. Quit it. To be jealous or to not be jealous doesn't mean that you don't care. You never get jealous over me. Well, good. That person's demonstrating love. But it means that you hold each other. Understand, it means that you hold the other lightly in the sense that you realize that everything that you have is not really yours, but it's God's. I I don't own Holly, we we learned a long time ago that our children don't belong to us. So if something doesn't belong to me, I can't take ownership and be jealous. You see, here's the, the protection, though. I think I put this in some of your notes. The protection of love means that um, when love is there, they will always return. Again, if you love someone, set them free, and if they don't come back, you never. That's not biblical. That's just a saying. But the truth in love is that if there is love, there will always be a relationship, and you don't have to make that happen. You don't have to tie them down. You don't have to rope them. You don't have to be jealous. You don't have to keep control over someone. If there is love, they will always come back. They will always be there. Love is not only not jealous, but love is is not boastful. Not boastful. What that means is this, is that love lets another person shine. Love will let another person um, be able to be in front without trying to act like you need to be in front. Love doesn't have every one of its conversations about itself. Love allows someone else to tell the story. And while you may tell it better or you may have a better story, love is not boastful. It does not try to take someone else's thunder. Love doesn't blow out someone else's candle so theirs shines brighter. Whatever kind of analogy you want, love allows someone else to have their way and to have their story. Love doesn't try to compete with another people. That's what really boasting is. It's trying to compete. It's trying to one up on one another. And if and if you have love, you're you're going to find yourself not doing that. You're going to let somebody else stand up and 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 get the award for the moment. And you're going to let the people them get applaud for applause for a moment. You're going to let someone else shine for a moment. Love is understanding that it's not about you all the time. That's what love is. Love is not boastful. To be boastful uh, to be boastful, even you don't even wait for someone else to praise you. You do it for them. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's the people you didn't know how good they were until they told you. That's boastful. You know, and, until they were able to share. And I told you, I've known people before that someone will tell a story and they'll say, hey, I know a little bit about that. Or that reminds me of the time where I was in a situation just like that. But let me tell you what happened. It's like, holy cow, stop just for a moment. Let them tell their story. That's boastful. That someone is always trying to compete. That someone is always trying to get other people to know how good they are. 
And I don't mean that you shouldn't try your best. Go out and achieve. I've told my sons, I've told you, it's amazing how mediocre you have to be to get ahead in this world today. You don't even have to do a whole lot to get a hold of everyone else. So I tell my boys, don't just settle. Go for the best. Do the best. Don't don't ever shy away. If someone says, man, you're good at that, say thank you and keep getting better about it. Don't ever back down for that. But if you're boastful, it means that you're always trying to push yourself ahead. And can I tell you something? If you have boasted to get ahead, you will have to boast to stay ahead. If if the approval of man is what you're looking for, you will always have to work for approval of man. And that will wear you out. And it's not love. Love is not boastful. You see, the protection that comes with love means that we don't have to prove that we're good enough because we're already good enough when someone loves us. That's amazing. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud. Move to, to proud just for a moment, just quickly. I want to tell you this, and don't. there's semantics here. You can have pride in something without being proud. Okay? You can be proud of something without having pride, what, however you want to say that and grammatically break that down. I'm, I'm proud of my family. I'm proud of, but, but pride is different. Pride is, uh, is a little bit different. What, what really the word proud means in this and other places, it means to be inflated. It means to be puffed up. If I may just tell you in Scott vernacular, it's, you're full of it. That's what it means to be proud. That, that you're puffed up, you're inflated, you're, you, you really, 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 really think a lot of yourself. And that's awesome. That's good. That's good for you, but it's not love. It's not love. When you're inflated, when you begin to build yourself up, when you, um, when you be full of yourself and, and everything is about you, again, it's not boastful, you're not necessarily telling everything, but you're going to be so proud that... that Oh, no, no, I don't go there. I don't associate with those people. I don't do that. I don't do this. And it's not a holiness kind of thing. It's because you're too good for those people. That you begin to look down on other people. That you see the world and you see them as the world sees them. I saw a, a uh, it was a commercial or something on Facebook. It was a slide or something. And it was a, uh, um, and it was a, apparently a homeless gentleman. And the line next to it said, Thank you for seeing me as a war veteran and not as a homeless man. So in that case, to be proud would be to see everybody as the homeless man and not see what God has in store for them. Some of you may have an ability to be able to see the person that no one else sees and sees anything else in them but be able to find the gem in them and be able to pull them out. Some of you have the ability to do that, but there's a lot of people in this world who look down on everyone who is not like themselves, and that is not love. It doesn't matter what else they say or what else they do. They are proud, prideful. They are inflated. They are full of themselves. And the Bible says that is the complete opposite of love. And just to be quick here, the protection of love is, means that when you are loving, it means that you think more of others than you do yourself. Again, the idea and, uh, in, our, in our house, we try to put up this thing. It says others first. I don't know that we get there all the time, but we try. And so others first, it's, it's being able to, to think of others more than we think of ourselves. It doesn't mean that you think of yourself less, but it means that you just begin to look for what other people. The next verse says this, is not only love is not jealous, not boastful, not proud, but love is not rude. It is not rude. To, to be rude is not just to be loud and obnoxious. We may know a lot of people like that. We may have felt like that at different times, but that's not just what being rude is. To be rude means that we begin to act unbecomingly. We act unbecomingly, and then that moment, we don't understand that we are. The, the word actually, if this will help you, the word actually comes from another root word that means to be, uh, that means to be deformed or indecent. That's, that's the root of this word, to be deformed or indecent. Um, <laughs> My dad used to say this. He'd go into meetings, and they'd be having to. Um, and he he worked uh, in a denomination, and he was kind of he would serve on some boards, and there would be people they would have to kind of work through some issues and problems because people are imperfect, and and they would have to do it, and they would have ministers that would come under him, and he'd begin to work uh, with these ministers, and I remember him coming out before, and he would he would say, Bobby, he said, I couldn't believe this person was just degrading this other person. It was one of the ministers that was on the board. 
that was evaluating the person in front of him, and he said they were just being degrading. They were being... And I remember my dad telling me one time, he said, we may be, he said, you may be right. You don't have to be a jerk about it. And he said, the person's hurting enough. The person's gone through something enough. Why would, why would we have to degrade them? Why would we have to do that? And that's really the idea. It's, it's, the, it's, it's the unbecoming nature, the deformity that, that says that, that we've got to be, that we've got to, We've got to put down other people because they've got to know their place. And can I tell you, it's not your place to put them in their place. That's being rude. That's a deformed idea of what God has designed us to do. Even, he says, well, only God judges me. Well, yeah, he will one day. But the reality is, is that there is some direction and some guidance that come in church and there's discipline in church and people around you, but it doesn't mean degrading the other person. It really means walking them through it and we shouldn't have a deformed idea of what it is to live around other people. And here's the protection. You say, if there's love in my life, if love is not to be rude, if there's love in my life, the protection of love means that we always desire to show our best and give our best. That we don't want to be a deformed idea of who we are. That, that when everything is going wrong at the McDonald's drive through <laughs> We were in one of those last night. Oh, five times they came to the window. We got chicken nuggets that we didn't order, and we're like, I don't even know what to do with this. And they were sort of handing, and they're like, okay, there you go. It's like, well, we need our food. You know, we were going through all that. Uh, uh, and Holly was driving, thank the Lord, because she is not rude at all. Uh, and so she was driving, so it was fantastic. And she was, we were just smiling at them and going, and we came up here, and who knows? There was a wreck up here, so maybe. We're like, hey, maybe God allowed there to be some stuff. We could have been a deformed characteristic or characterization of what Christ is, but we weren't. Doesn't mean we've always passed that test, but we weren't. Love means that you're always putting forth your best. You're not going to be rude. You're going to show other people your best. And I got to be quickly here. Quick here. I just, I'm sorry. Love does not demand its own way. We'll just go quickly here. Love does not demand its own way. Actually, I'm not going to go quickly. We'll finish it next week. Love doesn't demand its own way. Let's just stop there. I mentioned it before when we're talking about other people and those kind of things, but love says others first. Have you ever felt like you deserve something and you didn't get it and it caused everything about your day and everything about your life just to be shot? I've been there and I understand that, but the reality is that to truly demonstrate love means that none of this stuff was mine anyway and I'm not going to demand my own way. I'm not going to demand that you listen to me. I'm not going to demand that you go where I want to go. I'm not going to demand that you do. You say, well, I'm in charge. I understand that. But sometimes if you're, if you're going to live for God and you're going to walk with God and you're going to be as God have you do, you lead with the heart of a servant. That you understand that I don't have to get my own way every time. I don't have to have everything happen just the way I like it. It's not Burger King in Christ. You don't get it your way. You, 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 you have this life to where you say, this may not be everything that I like. This may not be everything that I do. And not demanding your own way. If you demand your own way, you have a tendency to believe that everybody else is doing it wrong just to bug you. That everybody else is doing things just to be able to be able to put it to you, but love does not demand its own way. It says others first. Listen. It means that there's times that our preference may not even be mentioned, that our preference may not even be put out there. We just got to look to serve other people. In order to love, in order to demonstrate love, to be loving, the Bible says that we do not demand our own way. And, and listen, we don't, we don't have this problem here. I know that. But I know in the past some of you may have been in churches to where this, you saw this that was in a, in a bad way. That people were upset because this was this way and that was that way. And somebody sat here and somebody did that. And they didn't sing and they didn't do. We're, we're going through the, the, the stuff for, for uh, obituaries this weekend. We were doing all that. And, and my dad was kind of walking me through. And he said, well, of course, you and David, my brother, you'll be in here. You know, and again, different dynamics with whatever. And, and, and everybody's loving. Everybody's fine. But it's just different dynamics with, with adult marriages and adult kids and all that kind of stuff. And, and I looked at my dad. I said, Dad, I don't care about any of that. None of that matters to me. That doesn't mean that I'm just great. There may be something else that does matter to me, but that didn't. 
And it meant that I wasn't going to demand my own way. That you get into the place you say, you know, this is not going to matter. In the end, this is not going to make a difference. Love doesn't demand its own way. What's the protection of love? The protection of love is simply that if I'm serving someone else, when do I get mine? That's the question, right? The protection of love is that when someone is loving you, they're not demanding their own way. They're demanding your way. And really, in reality, isn't that what God did for us when he sent his son? He didn't demand his own way. He made a way for our way to be open to him. When he sent his son, he says, I'm going to demonstrate true love. And, and listen, I, I got three boys, and I don't know that I could do that. You've got children. I don't know. But he said, I'm not demanding my own way. God's way in the reality was there was supposed to be justice. There was supposed to be judgment because there was sin on our life. That every one of us were born into sin and there was absolutely nothing at all that we could do good enough in order to be saved. So justice and judgment had to be served. There was a death penalty on your life because of the sin that you were born into. And that's just the nature of how it is. What happens is you stood before a righteous judge who could not pardon the offenses without there being the penalty that's paid. And Jesus, the son of the righteous judge, stands in between you and the judge and says, I don't even want it my way. I will have it their way. God, I stand before you and I take the punishment of the one before me so that the penalty of death can be paid and they can be set free. Love does not demand its own way. And in life today and in our, our loving other people, it means I'm willing to give of myself so that you can get where you need to go, so that you can be who God wants you to be. That's the definition of love. We're going to stop there because of time. we just bow your heads just for a moment. There may be some of you in this room that have been struggling with the, the issue of love. And I know we've been going through this and we've prayed over and over again. And, and, and some of you have demonstrated, Man, I, I, I want to love. I know there's past hurts. I know there's things that would keep you from really demonstrating the love of God. And it's when you let those things control you, when you let those things control you and control your life, you're never going to be able to walk in love because the hurt's too strong. The sin's too strong. The pain is too strong. Your own will is too strong. So I'm praying right now that the Holy Spirit would just sweep over you and And tell you to quit trying on your own. And I'll quit trying. Just start loving. Would you be long suffering? Don't work at it, just be it. Would you be kind? Would you be able to walk in kindness? Would you realize that the ownership is not in your hands of anything that is around you? Would you realize that you don't have to to lift yourself up? Would you realize that the reality is, is that the person sitting next to you is just as valuable as you are? Would you allow that kindness to be shown by you giving your best and showing your best? Because listen, there's times I've had to walk up to people and apologize for who I was before and said, I'm not that anymore, but I'm sorry because I lost it and I was rude. So God's saying, would you simply show your best? And would you realize the reality That I didn't demand my own way, God says, but I gave of myself for you. And say, God, would you help my love be demonstrated in the way that I give myself so that others can truly be first? Your heads are bowed. I want you to be thinking about the people that you've been having trouble loving. The situations that you found yourself that you have not lived up to the definitions that we have just talked about today. 
I'm, I'm not asking you to be loving so that people can just think good of you and you can have good relationships. I want you to be effective in what you do. And we learned last week that you can have all the great talents and all the great abilities, but if there's no love, it's just noise. I want you in this room that maybe you've been unloved. Maybe you have not seen the demonstration of love. I want you to know that God loved you so much that He gave His Son so that you could be forgiven and set free. Not so you could be a better person, but so that you could be forgiven. So right now, God, I pray that the atmosphere of love just settles on this room. Settles on this room. If you're in this room and you have felt unloved, I'm not talking about any time in your life, but right this moment, you're feeling unloved. I don't know if it's from family. I don't know if it's from God. I don't know what it is. But if you're feeling unloved in this moment, I want to tell you that the love of God is here and real. And while man may fail you, woman may fail you, humankind may fail you and may not demonstrate love, God not only has love for you, but He is love. He is the embodiment of love. And everything that He does is out of the context of love. So if you're in this room and you... Do not right now in this moment feel love. I want to invite you to to experience the love of God. And what I want to do is I want to invite you just just right now in your hearts. Right now I want you to begin to just say, God, I need need your love. God, I'm unloved and honestly at times I feel unlovable. God, if you'll love me, I'm here. If you will love me, I open myself up to be loved by you. If you will love me, God, I give myself to you. God, I pray that your love would be real. I pray that your love be demonstrated. Would you just do that? Would you just pray that? Be praying over the person that's next to you right now. It's the, greatest, it's the greatest thing that could happen in this moment. Someone being changed by the love of God. Now the rest of you in this room, I want you to just begin to pray. And I want you to begin to say, God, let me love. Can, God, would you help me to stop trying to love and start work, stop trying to work up love? And would you just let me be love? And where everybody else is in the corner talking about the person that nobody else likes. God, would you give me the courage to be loved to that person? Even when everyone else says that shouldn't be available. Would you, would you let me be loved? When I've been stabbed in the back and I've been knocked down and I've had people turn their back on me. God, would you let me not be controlled by that anymore? And would you simply let me be loved? Let me be love. If you're in this room and you're in desperate need of the love of God, just would you just you can open up your arms, open up your hearts, and receive the love of God in this place. Mm. Let me be love. God, help me be love. Today and tomorrow, there are going to be people that are hurting. Would you help me be love? Be love. God, would you help me be love? Is there anybody that needs anything at all today from God? And that you would just say, I just, I really need prayer. I really need something from God. We're going to give you a moment. We're going to sing this song. And if you just really need something in prayer to God, a few minutes over here. But I'm going to ask you to step up and we're going to join with you and we're going to pray for whatever it is that's going on in your life. So breath of God, we need a touch from you. 
and shine down on us with your light of truth. Stir our hearts and set our spirits free. Holy Spirit, come feel this sing breath of God. Breath of God, we need a touch from you. Would you stand in this place? Shine down on us with your light of truth. Stir our hearts and set our spirits free. Holy Spirit, just one more time. Sing breath of God. Breath of God, we need a touch from So shine down on Shine down on us with your light of truth. Stir our hearts. Stir our hearts and set our spirits free. Holy Spirit, come fill this place. Holy Spirit, come fill this place. Not because we're not people of faith, but because God gave us, God gave us a brain and He's delighted. When we use it, if you don't want to hold hands, just put your hands on the back of the person next to you. And I want you to pray over them. I want you to pray that God would allow them to be everything that God had called them to be. That they would be able to get past the hurts and the pains of the past and be able to feel love. And want, and if, now that they are loved, to demonstrate love. I want to pray that everything that would hinder them from being who the loving person would be gone. And that they would not attempt to love, but they would be loving as they walk from here. Uh, The control of the past is gone. But this person next to us is loved by God and is loving in demonstration to other people. Let 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 that be our call. Let that be our call. Let that be our call. Now, forget everything I said about using your brain. Hug somebody. Love them. Give them, with a, holy, give them a holy kiss and uh, be dismissed. Lauren's going to be out there by tickets.